Chris, in trying to discern what is consciousness, one of the areas that we deal with, which is an altered state of consciousness, is dreaming. We all do it. I do it. Um, it's very confused, literally, to me. Uh, how do we begin to understand that? You're a physicist. You've studied Carl Jung. How, how can you help me to understand what dreaming is all about? Well, my own personal experience, and every, I think every psychoanalyst, Jung or Freud or anybody would agree with this, is the different sorts of dream. Um, Rather random dreams where you just, I may dream of you tonight, you see. <laughs> and okay. so, oh, well, I hope mean, not. Yeah, hope not. Um, but there are other dreams that Jung called big dreams, which are quite different. Uh, and I've had a, a, quite a lot of big dreams in my time. In fact, for two years, I kept a diary, a dream diary of my big dreams. And they're extraordinary things. They're extremely coherent. They're not just the random, not at all. They're telling a definite story, quite complicated sometimes, very clear, all fits together, and so forth. Uh, very often, in my case, it was involved in battle between good and evil and things like that, and also clearly associated in some way with my mystical views about nature and things like that. Now, these big dreams are what um, psychoanalysts would tend to look at, uh, not the general noise. Uh, now, many people say they don't get these big dreams, but actually it's quite easy to generate them, you know. I mean, every, again, any analyst knows this. If you start with a pad of paper by your bed at night, when you wake up in the morning, wake up in the middle of the night, clicking in the middle of the night, write down what, what's in your mind. Just write it down, whatever it is. And what happens over a period of time is doing that tends to generate deeper dreaming. That's just a thing that's been noticed. That, that makes sense. You're yeah. reinforcing it. I can yeah, see that's that. Right. Um, so if you want to experience big dreams, I mean, personally, in some of my dreams, the emotions I experienced were far more powerful than anything I've ever experienced in my conscious life. Mm. So, of course, they have an impact on me. I mean, they affected me for days after, sometimes afterwards. Uh, so I, I think I take those experiences extremely seriously. Yeah, they're more emotionally powerful than anything I've had in real life, in fact, real life. <laughs> of course, I take them seriously, yes. Yeah. Uh, Look, I, I, I can appreciate that, and, maybe, and, and we should discuss it. I want to understand it. But the claim is not made that there's some relationship between those big dreams and an external reality. It's more your emotional internal nature, right? Or is there potentially some external reality to which those dreams could, could refer? Well, I'm not sure what you mean by external reality. I mean, if you had an EEG machine running on your head, but of course, as you, in that bottom when you dream, you generate certain types of waves. Sure. And deeper dreams tend to have more powerful waves associated with them. So in that sense, of course, there's an external marker of what's happening. Yeah, but, but there's no uh, external um, fundamental uh, uh, existence that you're plugging into. It's really just your really? own internal mind that's kind of well, cooking this stuff up. What's the difference dreaming and thinking? At the moment you're thinking, Chris is sitting opposite me. Now, how does that relate to external reality? Right? The thoughts inside you, it does go on to something because I'm here. Now, if I have a dream, again, it's something inside me. Mm -hmm. It, it doesn't, that doesn't necessarily mean, therefore, it doesn't refer in some way to the external world, but it's, it refers to the external world as you experience it, right? Dreams are about you, not actually about quantum physics, mm -hmm. by and large. Mm -hmm. So I think one has to get right around what's happening in dreams. I mean, but not mystical experiences necessarily, or something we can't understand, mm -hmm. but they can have a very profound impact, impact on people. You certainly see the relationship between the electrophysiology of the brain and, um, and dreaming. So uh, oftentimes different uh, centers in the brain will start That's impulses right. and oh, it will just trigger some thoughts. Mm. And it, ju it just seems pretty much a random situation, just triggered by electrical impulses that kind of mm -hmm. mixes up your, your day. I mean, there's certain purposes of sleep people are discovering, but it doesn't seem to be any deep, uh, deep uh, meaning to dreams. It's just electrical firing. So. Well, that's true of your ordinary sort of noisy dreams. Mm -hmm. But these big dreams are quite different from that. There's a long story being told. So something's going on somewhere, which is uh, you know, quite coherent. I mean, let me tell you something very personal, if I may. Um, when I was a student, I was having lots of problems. I became very depressed and was really quite ill. And it turned out that I had a focal lesion in my right temporal lobe. So in a technical sense, I had temporal lobe epilepsy. I never had fits. Now, the neurologists who were involved me would have said, aha, the reason why Chris gets these mystical feelings is because the right temporal lobe is firing. Which is true, but does that mean that therefore there's no connection with reality? No, not necessarily. After when I see you, my optical nerve is firing. Does that mean there's no external reality? No, it doesn't. Of course not. So it's just what I'm used to thinking about uh, 
be sort of mystical things in that way. So I mean, that, that's a very interesting exploration mm. because the argument would be made that uh, mystical experiences, mm. dreaming, is related to the brain, and if there's a if there's some problem in the brain that triggers this, we would have that experience. Uh, um, on the other hand, what you're saying is that is that uh, we we have to be able to experience these things, whether it's the vision through the eye, and if that mechanism is there. Anyway, and it does, and you do have the experience that that's the way you you'll be seeing. So what you're saying is, that if you the, the brain is is uh, you can interpret it two different ways, mm. whether there is a reality to it or whether the brain is just causing the nonsense. I mean, I'm sure you know this, but some very distinguished creative people suffer from temporal lobe epilepsy. Dostoevsky, for example, very famously did. Um, many people think Van Gogh did as well. So. Now, you have to ask yourself, if these people produced what are generally regarded as very fine creations, is that a random firing of the brain that led to that? Well, mm. you could say so, I suppose, but, you know, there's something obviously, there's something a bit incoherent about that belief, actually, because we do accept that people with um, temporal lobe epilepsy, if you like, get mystical feelings, but they also produce creative works, which we accept as being very fine creative works. So something's going on that is actually useful, I would say. Well, uh, that certainly can be true and perhaps is true. Uh, yeah. uh, but um, you, you can't, though, you, that's more of an internal thing. It's more of a way that the creativity is generated. It's not that it's, it's plugged into some super reality of some kind, right? It, it, it's, it generates your own internal creativity, but not because you have this sudden... Uh, a special relationship with a non-physical world or God or mystical unity of nature. It's not, not really plugged into oh, that. I, actually, I don't think I said that, <laughs> nor no. would I. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that when you have these big dreams means that something going on of the sort you're talking about. I mean, they're simply big dreams. <laughs> right. The right, question right. is the impact they have on you, and that affects you as a human being. Right, right. So I, it's I, certainly not true. I'm I, I'm not sure, but I just want to clarify, we're not saying that they're big because they're connected to some external fundamental reality that you have a special sense about. No, it's not what I'm saying. I mean, some, well, Jung himself might have said a bit more than that. Yes. Uh, but that's very speculative metaphysics. And right. I wouldn't necessarily go down that road, no.